Jesus name. I continue to praise and call out your sweet name, Father God. I continue to do your will and your purpose and destiny for my life, oh Father God. I pray that your power will shimakarasa in me right now, Father God. For the first thing that happened when Adam and his wife became one flesh was they were naked and not ashamed. That means they have been naked this whole time and did not know it. This is why they were not ashamed. The first thing Adam and Eve knew when they received knowledge was the fact that they were naked. The first conversation between Adam and God is about him being naked. The first thing that man physically created for himself with his hands was his cross. naked neck. And what I want to say in that is, God, everything that God created, it was good. So when he created man to not be ashamed of his nakedness, it was good. As you see those artsy people, they see nakedness as an art, a form of like beauty. When we see our nakedness, we sometimes cover up or get ashamed. You see like the artists or the potential artists that come in to draw a figure that's naked, they become uncomfortable with the, the figure's nakedness. But God created us all to be that art. And he created, created us intentionally to not be judgmental. He created us intentionally not to be um, separated or aside from one another. Like our nakedness was the same. As you see, Adam and Eve knew not of their nakedness. And that's why they weren't ashamed. And ultimately, when they became... Uh, when sin came into them and they knew good from bad, they knew their nakedness was bad. They, they felt ashamed of their nakedness. And this is my message to you, to those of you that have been ripped of your clothing. Sin has come upon you and your nakedness is showing. You've been exposed. I come to tell you to not be ashamed of what it is that has been exposed in you. And you don't have to explain yourself to people. When you've been exposed, it's out there. I mean, people can come up with any kind of opinion or comment on what they what has been exposed. So don't explain the explanation of the explanation because it's kind of like, I mean, we're gonna have our we're gonna draw our opinion to it anyway. So why not just let it go for what it is, and you don't ever have to explain God. God will explain himself and if he uses you as a tool or instrument to do it, he can. So be it. So I, I feel like we shouldn't have to explain our exposing of our nakedness because God created us um, when we get full of the Holy Spirit and we're so full with, and filled with joy, there should be a care upon you. And that's what was upon Adam and Eve before sin came upon them. They didn't know good from bad. They didn't know right from wrong. They didn't know black from white. They didn't know tall from short. They didn't know ugly from beautiful. All they knew was everything that God created, it was good. It is good. That's all they knew. Everything is good. It's all good in the neighborhood. But when the devil came and sin came upon them, they were able to differentiate between bad, evil, good, um, you know, tall and short, everything I said. And, and God didn't create us that way. That's why the Bible says don't judge one another. And pretty much don't because talk about one another. This is ultimately what God intended for us. He intended for us to be exposed. But it is good. You know what I'm saying? No matter what comes from it is good. Because everything that he created was good. So every seed that God planted, everything that he made is good in, in the earth. Everything grew in the earth from what he created. So what I want to say to you, in these days, in these times, when you go into the hood and you, um, you see a gang, they want to know what you got on. What color are you wearing? They're not worried about your nakedness exposed. They want to know, are you with me or are you not? And they determine that by the color of your clothes. And even with the award shows, at the beginning, before they even give out the awards, they're determining what the people that will be sitting in the audience are wearing and whose clothing they are wearing. If you notice, Adam and Eve made loincloths for themselves. But ultimately, in the end, prior to God making them leave, the, the garden, he made clothing for them out of animal skin. Now, why couldn't they continue to keep their loincloths that they made? Because I'm going to give you something good to send you out there on your way. Although your nakedness has been uncovered and you have been seen, you have been heard, you have been shown, and publicly they have seen you naked. 
I'm going to send you something that's going to cover you as you walk out there in that, although I have cursed you. So God loves us and ultimately he wants us to do good and prosper in our way. So that's why he sent Adam and Eve on their way in animal skin clothing, although they sinned. And, and the first thing that he said was they shall leave their father and wife and become one and they, shall, they were naked and not ashamed. To let you know, they they had all their business out there in front of each other, but they weren't ashamed of it. And I think ultimately in this lifetime, we have social media, we have comments, we have people that have their own personal opinion about your life and what you're doing. And that's causing pain upon some people because a lot of people care what other people think. And it's ultimately, like if you're not close to me, I kind of sort of don't pretty much care what you think because it kind of doesn't matter because I'll be like I'm not going to see you again and if I do you know that issue is there but it, it shouldn't ultimately determine the future of your life it shouldn't determine who you are a lot of people allow things to validate them they allow um, anything in life to validate them it could be even another person validates who you are but what happens when you lose that person what happens when you are naked and you are uncovered and everything is exposed and you don't have that thing that you think validates you you no longer think you are good but notice this that when you're naked and God has created you everything is good I have a scripture to back that one up. I'm going to read that from my Bible. Uh, I am the true vine. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the bread cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he is it. It is the me and I in, in from him. He it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be... And so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you. And that your joy may be full. I'm going to go on and read that last paragraph because this is an amazing scripture. This is my commandment that you love one another Greater as I love, love you. has no one than this. That someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, no longer do I call you servants. For the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all that I have heard from my father. I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. Amen. I like that. I like that. That scripture is called, I am the true vine. And I like that because God ultimately put in us what we need. And that's what makes us good. That's what, that's what makes our nakedness great. And that's what, what you notice how when the prophets, when they were prophesying, it really, the, the power of God fell on them. Their true nakedness would come out. They would truly like lose themselves in God. And that's what I thought. I'm like, if your spirit pours upon everyone on the earth, Father God, in the last days, where do our our personal spirits go? Like, where do our personal people go? Is His spirit? Because when God shows up, you should disappear. You shouldn't be there. Like, it should be God, the spirit of God. And no one can take that away. No one can stop that. No one can change that. And your feelings are gone. Like, you shouldn't have any feelings. You shouldn't have any feelings about your nakedness. You shouldn't have any feelings about you being out there. And I'm going to be candid for one moment and a little transparent because that was a hard thing for me to overcome um, 
speaking about God's word to people and, and just going out there and like laying it all out there because I like the truthfulness that he allows me to give people because it allows someone else that is going through something similar for them to come out of it. Now although God is helping me behind the scenes and, and pruning me as I mentioned in that scripture or giving me or showing me or taking away those things that I don't need and those things that give me the things that I do need. He sends me in front of a camera or in front of a person to speak a word that he has given me to encourage them to continue on and to continue to do their will for their life. Because he's given me the power and the comfort to do the will for my life. As he comforts me, he gives me the power to comfort someone else. And I think that is a beautiful thing. Because everything that God creates is good. I'm okay with my vulnerability and my nakedness, my exposing. Because it's kind of like that's ultimately who I am. And you can't can't take that away from me. You can't change anyone's nakedness. Once you take away the clothes, you strip away the facade, their nakedness is who they are and you can't take that away from them. Only God, when the spirit and the power of God has come upon them, he takes that away and that becomes his power, his Holy Spirit. His power working in us. You know what I'm saying? Because we ultimately are great. He made us to be good. So if you are covering up what God has created, he is ultimately going to expose it and try to show it to the world. He doesn't light a lamp to hide it. He likes the lamp to put it on the stand. Excuse me. He likes the lamp to put it on the pedestal to show the world this light that he has lit. I am one of those lights and he's lighting me and I'm, I'm doing these videos to show the world or the individuals that watch it that it's okay to show your light. It's okay to be naked. It's okay because the putting on the full armor of God is not just um it's just not just an apparel. It's actually a weapon. God is so amazing. The apparel that He made for us is actually a weapon for us. Faith and prayer in the Spirit. That is the full armor of God. Like that that wear that He gave us. The helmet of the helmet of salvation, all of that, that he gave us, those are tools for us to fight with and to wear. Who knows a uh, um apparel that actually does something and covers you up? He covers us and he fights for us. The same thing that's our weapon is the same thing that's protecting us. That is awesome. That is an awesome thing. But I will tell you this one thing. I will tell you this, Psalm 37, 12, and then I'm out. The wicked plot is against the just, and gnashes upon with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. Back to Psalm 37, 32. The wicked watches the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The wicked watches the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The wicked watches the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The wicked watches the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. So what I say to you is, keep going. Keep giving your light to shine, no matter what is exposed. Matter of fact, expose yourself. Expose yourself to your nakedness, to your true self, to your true vine. Because if you don't do it, God is going to do it. God is ultimately going to pull the fruit out and give you the fruit that you need in all your nakedness because we are good. Notice that when Jesus got off the cross, they cast lots for his clothes. And the only thing that was left in that in that um, tomb, okay, yes, the two guys that was with him were sitting in the tomb as well, but I'm just saying, like, in that tomb was his clothes. You want to know why? Because he's already exposed himself. He's already shown himself. He's already completely put on the full power of God. He's already been in the presence of God. He's already lost himself, but he got God back. And that's what I'm coming to tell you. The Holy Spirit is your true nakedness. It's your true nakedness. This is the Holy Spirit being upon you because when you're truly naked, you're not ashamed. You're not ashamed. When you're truly naked, you're not ashamed. So I just pray this, that um, when Adam and Eve sinned, they were naked and they were ashamed. But God said, where are you, Adam? Because he wants you to be closer to him. And once you release that power with God, who, who ultimately wants us to be good. All he wants to see is the seeds that he created upon the earth to be good and to be fruitful and to multiply. So whatever um, seed that is that you plant upon people, make it good. And if it's not good, it should ultimately determine or become good. Because everything that God created is good. So expose yourself. Lose yourself in God's true nakedness. Get naked. Much love. Be blessed. God's love.